So in this class, you're going to have to, you're going to be required to create a test strip for every print that you make. A test strip allows you to have a little bit of a brighter image and a little bit of darker image all on the same photographic piece of paper. And you have to do this every assignment. Uh, and the reasons for that are, is the only way to get better um, is to properly exercise. And that's to, to train your eye to notice what's good and what's bad within an image. Uh, so in this case, uh, I've created a handout for you. It's a 32-step handout. Uh, but that just means I'm very specific. And we're going to go through all of those 32 steps in a very short period of time. So don't be afraid. Let's just uh, download the handout and dig in. So the first thing, the first step is to open an image in Photoshop. We've already done that. Woohoo, we're done. Oh, no, we have more. Uh, the second step in the handout is to grab the marquee tool. Uh, the marquee tool is the second icon down on your, uh, down in your tools panel. So you click on that. I'm going to press Command minus to make it just a hair smaller, to make the image just a hair smaller on the screen. Uh, now, the next step is step three, and that's draw a vertical selection across the left side of your image. Now I've done that. Let's flip over here to step four. And I'm doing it by the steps. I'm not gonna skip any steps for you because, well, it takes, um, takes exacting detail to get it right. Okay, so now that I've done this, I have a marquee tool and I'm on step four, and that's to come down here to the plus, uh, sorry, to the, the black and white circle at the bottom, and then click on the exposure uh, adjustment tool. You can click on it here, or you can come up to the adjustments panel and click on the plus minus black white uh, square. It's the same tool, it's just located in two different places. Uh, and that creates a new exposure adjustment layer on top of my layers panel. Then we're on to step four, or step five, and we highlight the exposure and we just put in here minus two. Now it says on there minus three, and that's perfectly fine. You can follow along with the, the handout, but uh, really it's minus two is a better, uh, is a better one. Okay, so then we, from this point, we copy this layer, right? And we can copy it by clicking and dragging this layer down to the new layer icon, or what I call the post-it note. And we now have a copy of that layer. That's step six. Step seven is to select the move tool. And then step eight is to click on the top of this layer and drag your, uh, your, your second exposure adjustment layer to the right. Now, I'm gonna show you a super duper simple, quick secret. If I hold the option key down, you'll see that it changes my icon. If I hold the option key down, it changes the icon, and then I can click and drag this over, this exposure adjustment layer over, and you see that it just, now it's copied again, and we have three exposure adjustment layers. I can do that again, and again. And so quickly, I can populate the, uh, the entire image just by holding down the Option or Alt key. And it's Option on a Mac and Alt on a PC. And so ideally, we just want to drag out well, I have, I have too many, that, more, more than I need. So I'm gonna delete these top two. We need eight is sort of our minimum number. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch these eight across this, the rest of this photograph. And so I've selected the bottom exposure, hold the shift key down and select the top exposure layer. So we have them all selected. And we come to edit, free transform, and that'll, that will allow us to have a box built around these. And if they're too big, I can squish them. If they're too small, I can stretch them. Okay, so now that I've covered the image, I hit enter, or I can hit the check mark that it was located up here. Okay, so that takes us to step 10. And the, the step 10 is basically we want to isolate this one in the middle, number four, since we have 
eight, uh, well, nine exposure layers, right? We want to isolate number four, and we want number four to be zero. Then we can click on number one, that, is, that should stay at minus two. Number uh, exposure layer, uh, exposure, co exposure one copy, right here. Click on this, and now this will be minus 1.5, so it's just a hair uh, lighter than the, than the one on the far left. This one's going to be minus one. This one's going to be minus 0.5. And so now you see that we're creating a stepped gradient all the way across. So minus 0.5. This one will be plus 0.5 or just 0.5. This will be one. And this will be uh, 1.5. And then our final one will be just plus two. So I'll just type in two. And you'll see that in some cases, our highlights are now blowing out, you see here, uh, but our shadows might be much richer at plus two, as opposed to uh, over here at zero, which is right in the middle. And you'll see that one, you know, one side looks really dark and ominous, and the other side looks bright and vibrant. Those are just different ways that we can see the image. And it's important that we don't have any blown out highlights or any blocked up shadows. So that takes us to number 18, and number 18 is what we call grouping the layers. So uh, I want to grab the top layer or the bottom layer, whichever one I'm on, hold the shift key down so that I have them all selected, and then I want to click on this folder icon down here at the bottom of the layers panel. So click on that, and you'll see that now I have all of those in a group. Okay, so the next step is for us to make this document much more useful. Uh, and the, re the way we can make it more useful is by adding some type to it, some text to it. So I want you to come down the tools panel, grab the type uh, icon, or click on the type icon, and you'll see here that we have, now we have a type tool, I can change the font. Okay, so we've clicked on the type tool now, we have, uh, we've selected the font that we want to choose, and now we just click in the middle of our first, uh, our, our farthest left, um, exposure adjustment layer, and I'm going to type in minus two because that goes with our, uh, our current selection. Click the move tool, and we can, now, we can now copy and paste this all the way across just by doing our simple trick of holding the option key down and then dragging that to our next, uh, that to our next exposure adjustment layer. And let's just click and drag this over. Okay, and you'll see that you know this can be done really simply and quickly. And it doesn't necessarily matter if it's all lined up, but you'll notice the, that it'll look really nice if it is. So now that I have all of these at minus two, I need to relabel them so that we have minus two to plus two, and they're all labeled properly. So we have minus two over here. Uh, the next one up is minus should be minus one point five. So I can double click the type icon here in the layers panel and it automatically highlights our, uh, our text. So I can use, still use the same minus and then type 1.5. Okay, click on the, on the two, uh, copy two and change that to minus one. Two copy three, change that to minus 0.5. Two copy four and we're gonna change that to we're going to change that to zero. Change this to plus 0.5, plus one. Two copy seven, change that to plus 1.5. And then two copy eight, and change that to plus two. Okay, and so if I want to come back in and, and sort of line these up so that the so that the text is actually in the middle of the of that selection I can and you'll see here that I'm right clicking 
on the individual um, on the individual layer I want, and it gives me a subcontext menu, a contextual menu that says uh, I can select any of these layers that I'm trying to click on, and that quickly allows me to adjust just that layer. Okay, so now I want to group these layers together just like I did with the group of exposure adjustment. So I've selected the top one, hold the shift key down, and select the bottom one, and then grab, or then, sorry, click on this uh, folder icon, and that gives me both group one and group two. Uh, I also might want to uh, rename them so that they're more organized. So group one is exposure. Exposure adjustments. And then I can label group two as type. And so then I can close those up and they're, they're nice and organized. We have our images, uh, we have our icons closed up. We have our group icons closed up and we're ready to save this out. And I want you to save this with the words temp, uh, test strip template into the thaw space. And so to do that, I would press, uh, I would go to file, save as. Because basically, I'm gonna save a copy of this. Uh, so I want you to do file, save as, and then if you haven't done it already, create a new folder with your name on it. Just like that, that's my name, so I'm gonna use that. And then I'm gonna change the document name to can't spell template apparently. Um, and so I'm gonna change the document name to test strip template, and that's gonna be saved in the thaw space so that later, when I am ready to do another test strip, I can just copy and paste this over into a new document. So click save. Okay, then let's come back over to our desktop where we had our five by seven image saved out. I'm gonna open that back up. And then I'm going to open our test strip template up. And so we have two different documents, one with the test strip on it and one without the test strip on it. Um, but I want to copy and paste or drag and drop our test strip over onto the Yosemite uh, 5262, 10, 10 and a half by seven inches. So now that I have uh, both of these images up, I want to then grab the test strip template and rip it off the top. So click, drag, and pull it off of that line so that it will float independently, and then let go of the button. And so now I have it just sort of free floating in here. I usually drag this off to the left just so that I can uh, quickly drag and, uh, drag and drop this uh, onto our image behind. So uh, I wanna make sure that I have both the type and the exposure adjustment groups uh, selected. And to do that, as I said before, we click on the top one, hold the shift key down, click on the bottom one, or vice versa. And then I can click and drag, and I want to sort of hit the center roughly with this. So then I will move this into place. And because I resized my image before I put my test strip on, it's going to, everything is going to match up. But if I wanted to uh, resize my image after the fact, or if I wanted to print larger, for instance, I could always, with these two selected, I could come up here to uh, free edit free transform and then drag this either smaller or larger. Now I don't want to do that so I'm going to click the just say no button, I call it the Nancy Reagan button. Uh, so now I have it on my new image and I will save this out by just command S and I am ready to go print.